Okay, today we're doing a video on how to install a picture in a frame. And I already did a video on how to cut glass, but um, I'd show, I thought I'd show in a deep frame when you're cutting glass directly in the frame. You need something to um, raise up the glass so that it's all approximately the same height. And um, so we start with that. And sometimes if the frame is a little bit kittywampus, you can cut the glass to a straight edge and it'll help force the frame to be more in square. This frame is uh, real good, so I'm just going to cut it right into the frame. There we go. And now we're going to uh, clean the glass. And I like to use uh, chem wipes that are actually used for uh, cleaning uh, technical equipment. Um, they're kind of for the scientific instrument company and then uh, sprayway glass cleaner. And you clean the glass almost more by feel than by looking. You kind of polish the glass. And then I like working underneath a 48 inch um, light so that you can bounce the light off the glass and see if you have any water spots or any flaws or anything that you need to make better. So I kind of make that um, light go on the glass so you can make sure it's perfect. Uh, then after inspecting that side of the glass, I like to prop the uh, artwork next to it and take a uh, air compressor and gently blow off any possible specks. And then flip the two up together. Sometimes I'll even give it a little shake to knock any little specks off. And then I clean the face of the glass. And the reason I don't clean both sides of the glass and then put it on the piece is if there's any tape residue or ATG tape on the paper, it will um, stick to the glass. And I'd rather have it stick to the glass that's away from the art than the next to the art. And then it's just a matter of doing what we did before and um, kind of polish the glass till it feels really nice and clean and then we again uh, bounce the light off of it so we can you know make sure there's no streaks or specks or anything and sometimes I'll even take a little flashlight and hold it right next to the piece to just double triple check that it doesn't have any issues and uh, like right now I see a little speck there and 
I'm going to get a razor blade and see if sometimes there's specks on the glass that are stuck to it and it looks like it came off already. But when you see that it's perfect and there's no specks, you can install it into the frame. But a lot of times you'll see something stuck to the mat and then you need to, you know, lift the glass up and take a razor blade or an eraser and get the uh, piece all clean because it gets very time consuming and frustrating to get it all together with the paper back and hangers and then notice some imperfection between the glass and the mat. So you want to make sure that's all done before you put it in the frame. But this looks really good now so I'll go ahead and install it. Um, another thing to remember is uh, when you've glued the frame together a lot of times there's a little bulge of glue underneath and you need to take a razor blade and take that uh, glue out of the corner so the glass can lay nice and flat into the frame. And um, then it's just a matter of laying the frame on the piece and then uh, pushing it up to the underside of the lip of the frame and turning it upside down and uh, then it feels all nice and flush in there take a point driver and uh, I like the Logan point driver and it shoots these little uh, arrows that are uh, bendable and if you're an artist doing work that you offer your artwork for sale uh, framed and unframed with of course different prices you can bend these back and uh, take the work out and then someday put something else in the frame that's the same size. And I do about three inches apart. There we go. And what I like to do before I call it done is um, take a tape measure and um, measure the edge of the inside of the mat to the lip of the frame and make sure that it's all centered into the frame. That measures two and a half exact on the bottom, two and a quarter exact on the top, and it's a little bit, it's a little more than two and a quarter down there, a little less than two and a quarter up there, and a little less than two and a quarter, and a little more up there. So what I need to do is take a razor blade, or not a razor blade, but a um, a, a screwdriver and um, push into the um, push into the back of the uh, board and kind of force it a little one way or another depending on just where you need to go There, I didn't have a screwdriver right, right in front of me, so I shut the camera off to get a flathead screwdriver. But you push it into the back of the frame. Like down here, it's a little closer than over here. So I put the blade of the screwdriver in and just twist a little bit and push the whole thing down that way a little at the bottom. And then I go over here and do the same thing and twist this side up a little towards the, the other direction at the top. And 
then I um, measure this again. Yep, two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. So that looks good. Now if you'd like to lock it into position, you could take some tape and go around it and um, keep it into the spot it's going to stay. You know, once it gets carried around and stuff, sometimes it wants to uh, shift out of position because the frames are all made an eighth inch bigger than the um, board so that it can expand and contract without warping. So once you get it all even in there you might want to um, tape all around the edge to lock that into position there we go and then the next is we're going to paper the back and I just take a roll of ATG tape you can use glue though if you'd like and I go about almost an eighth of an inch away from the outside edge and uh, put the HEG tape all around it. And there is a gun that you can um, use that will, uh, you know, dispense the ATG tape for you. But I find it easier to control just by hand rather than with the gun. Here's, here's what the ATG gun looks like. And it just lays a little sticky... Uh, line like that and then we tear off a piece of paper that's bigger than we need so it's a very generous amount hangs over the edge and kind of float it on there and then um, peel off the backing of the ATG tape and that exposes the sticky part and you can peel off the sticky uh, or peel off the backing before you put the paper on but if you do it uh, with the paper on it first, it um, you can you know position it easier because it's not stuck down at all. Once you take the um, the paper off the back of the ATG tape, it's sticky, and it's very aggressively sticky once you um, push the paper into the frame. And what I'm doing here is kind of uh, tugging against. Um, the side and I don't know if you can see that let me try this again here so I'm going like this to push down on the paper and then also on the opposite side so I'm kind of stretching the paper and years ago I used to spray water over the paper before I uh, stretched it down and it would get so tight it would be like a drum but every once in a while the pressure of the shrinking backing would pull the frame apart so I don't do that anymore I just uh, use my hands to get it real tight but you can see it's you know just real real tight and then you put the razor blade, kind of pinch it between your thumb and forefinger, like that, and then uh, run the razor blade all around the edge of the frame. 
to trim it off. So you're not trying to, um, you know, cut a piece of paper the exact size that you need on the back and position it on there. That would be almost impossible to get it lined up perfectly. But when you get a piece of paper much bigger than you really need and then trim it off, you'll have a perfect edge on the paper. There we go. And if there's any uh, tape residue, you know, the ATG sticky part that's exposed at all, you can just take your fingers and kind of rub it off and it'll um, kind of ball up and, and uh, come right off. So now we have a nice neat looking backing and uh, this is the bottom so I'm going to put um, bumpers at the bottom. And we use these little felt pieces. And then we put our little framer tag at the bottom. And now we um, put in the hanging system. And I use my handy dandy mat marker to uh, measure down. In this case I'm going to go down about five inches somewhere between about a fourth and a third down of the height of the piece is what uh, usually works best. And I'm using uh, D-rings and screws and they come different sizes but this isn't a really big piece so I'm just using small one. And uh, you want to make sure that the back end of the D-ring doesn't hang beyond the outside edge of the frame because when it's on the wall you don't want to see that silver uh, part when the piece is hanging on the wall. And what I do is screw it in a little bit to um, just start it. And of course you could screw it in by hand all the way, but then I use a drill with a Phillips head on it to put it in the rest of the way. And what I like to do is put it in all the way so it doesn't move, but then take the um, the Phillips bit in a screwdriver and just back it out a little bit so that this swings. You want this to find its own level and not be so locked in that it won't swing because that will put a lot of stress on the uh, edge of the D-ring that is folded around that piece of metal. If this is locked in then the piece of metal wants to kind of bend and if it's free to swing then uh, there's no stress on that. Um, D ring. Now I have both D rings on here and uh, they both will swivel. So now it's time to put the wire on. And um, let me see if I can move this so you can see a little easier. So I just, um, I'm using 25 pound wire now, but they uh, come from uh, 15 pound up to 60 pound is the most um, 
common. I mean, there's wire up to 90 pounds, and uh, there are other ways to, uh, you know, hang pictures. There's, um, uh, you know, the eyelets that people have used for many, many years, and uh, it um, makes it stand away from the wall a little bit more when you use an eyelet. Here, let me get one to show you. And of course with these there's many many different sizes you know and of course the bigger the frames the more you would use just like with these D rings these are uh, smaller the other size that we use a lot is um, is this one but this is way bigger than you need for a piece of that's this small so I'm just using this smaller one and what I like to do is loop the wire through the D-ring twice at least so that it has less of a chance of um, coming loose and then I wrap the wire around itself so that it's about three quarters of an inch of wire wrapped around it and it's just a matter of twirling it on there and then I push it down, wrap a little bit more. So there you go. I'll cut that off though, of course. So it makes for a, a nice, neat end of the wire. Now I'm going to shut the camera off and then do the other side. Okay, here it is all done. The back is all wired and ready to go. Then we use a hook to pound in the wall to hang it up with that we have in these little bags. And the secret to the hook is that the nail goes down at an angle and it kind of pinches the sheetrock so you don't have to be into a stud. And uh, on this one it's so small, um, one frame or one hook would be fine. If you wanted to use two that would be okay too, that it would, you know, keep it from swinging on the wall. But um, one should be just fine. And here it is all ready to go now but this one went pretty easy and I want to explain what to do when uh, something is uh, fights you and is more difficult for example it's not uncommon to install a picture find specs underneath take it all apart get the specs out put it all back together and then find another spec or two and sometimes what happens is when you put diamond points in and out of a frame or if the frame is gold leaf and has a lot of like flecking and pieces that are kind of crumbly on the inside um, which especially happens with antique frames that you know particles keep falling out between the glass and the mat or the glass and the art so one trick to keep the particles from falling into the um, glass is to use a, uh, a tape and go all the way around the edge of the glass and tape it like a package um, just to give you the idea of how to kind of wrap this glass like a package so specks don't fall underneath the uh, glass I'll use this uh, piece of foam core and this little piece of glass to kind of explain how to do it. So you take some two inch wide packing tape and you pull out a piece that's the length of the edge you're wrapping and you just start by going about a, almost an eighth of an inch over the top of the glass and just kind of touch it in a few spots so that you're um, 
getting it to adhere to the glass but not so much that it would show once the lip of the frame is around the edge. You want this tape to be under the lip of the glass. And then you kind of push it around the edge and then you wrap it around the back. And what happens is you end up with a edge that's closed off now. No uh, specks can fall underneath there. And I first discovered this by uh, putting some pieces in some antique frames and they were just shedding in between the glass and the picture uh, over and over again so finally decided to try this and uh, I've used this um, trick a lot on a lot of newer things too when you're uh, working with uh, newer frames that have um, edges that keep uh, flaking off going between the glass and the picture so hopefully that helps to uh, show you how to solve that problem. So that's how to uh, install a picture in a frame which is uh, pretty easy.